gas centrifuge, a commonly used device for separating the isotopes of chemical elements. One of the key ingredients of an atomic bomb is enriched uranium-235, or U-235. Naturally occurring uranium is mostly uranium-238, or U-238. Only about 0.7% is U-235. In order to make nuclear fusion work in a reactor or bomb, the percentage of the U-235 must be increased to about 5% for nuclear reactors, or about 90% for atomic bombs. A popular way to obtain this higher ratio of U-235 is with a device called a gas centrifuge. This is how it works. The gas centrifuge has the following main parts. A rotating chamber, an evacuated chamber, high-speed motor, support bearing for rotating chamber, and a gas exchange mechanism for three gas streams. We begin with the gas exchange mechanism. All three streams are connected to the rotating chamber via a dynamic seal. The rotating chamber itself is contained within an evacuated chamber along with the high-speed motor. This chamber is evacuated to reduce drag on the rotating chamber. Uranium enters the rotating chamber as a gas of uranium hexafluoride, or UF6. This compound contains about 99.3% of U-238 and only 0.7% of U-235. As the chamber spins, it slowly starts spinning the gas. As the gas spins, it is subjected to a centrifugal force gradient based on the spin rate of the chamber. The faster the spin, the bigger the gradient of the force. This force will then push heavier molecules towards the wall of the rotating chamber, while the lighter molecules would be pushed towards the center of the rotating chamber, essentially separating them. A molecule of UF6 with a U238 atom has more mass than a molecule of UF6 with a U235 atom. While the difference in mass is really, really small, a difference of only three neutron masses, a really fast spinning chamber will still be able to separate the U238 from the U235. These chambers spin at up to 100,000 revolutions per minute. That is extremely fast. This is the main reason why these chambers are hard to create. Because of this high speed, the chamber often needs to rotate on special bearings like a magnetic bearing. This reduces wear and friction, allowing the chamber to obtain a high spin rate. Another issue that needs to be addressed because of the high spin rate is the immense destructive force of an unbalanced or resonating chamber. To minimize both situations, the chamber may contain a bellow at a certain point, allowing it to flex, absorbing developing vibrations as it spins. In any filtration process, we have at least three distinct flows. The flow that needs to be filtered, the processed flow, and the waste flow. The source flow of the UF6 enters the rotating chamber from the center tube. Inside this tube is a smaller tube which connects to a scoop at the bottom of the chamber. This scoop is near the wall of the chamber. Since that's where most of the U-238 is gathered, this scoop will collect UF6 gas that's depleted of U-235. Normally, we can place another scoop near the center of the chamber to collect the UF6 gas that's enriched with U-235, since that's where they would mostly gather. This scoop is then connected to an even bigger tube that surrounds the first two tubes to extract the enriched UF6 gas. To make the system even more efficient at separating U-235 from U-238, the bottom of the chamber is heated to set up a temperature gradient of a few degrees Celsius between the top and the bottom of the chamber. This will create a convection current which will then create a counterflow of rising U-235 enriched gas and a falling U-235 depleted gas. This counterflow makes the separation process more efficient. One chamber is usually not enough to achieve the desired enrichment level, so these chambers are usually chained together in a configuration called a cascade to get the desired enrichment level.